Hello, welcome to another video. This is from Unit 6, Cruel Sport in our Leisure Units. Today we're looking at bare knuckle boxing and how the sport of boxing has evolved over time. Bare knuckle boxing, also known as prize fighting, was a, a crude form of early boxing. This is where no boxing gloves were being worn. And originally, groups of men would travel around the country. They would attract large crowds, issuing a challenge to fight any of the locals for a large sum of money. People would come round, they would donate some money to watch, uh, and they would stand to watch the fight. Biting, gouging, kicking, throwing, or wrestling, these were not allowed, nor was hitting below the waist. All you were allowed to do was to strike your opponent above the waist with your fist. Now, bouts would continue until one could no longer fight, and sometimes these would last for two or even three hours. There were no referees, and the audience was expected to be the enforcers of fair play, and that meant that a boxing match in High Wycombe would have different rules to a boxing match in Aylesbury. Different crowds would mean different rules. But one popular form of fighting, which was universally accepted, was the Irish stand-down. This is where you would have both opponents uh, who would stand toe-to-toe -to -toe rather than moving around the ring, and they would just throw a punch and then take a punch. The original rules to bare knuckle boxing were quite lengthy, uh, but this is just a very small selection of what those rules were. Uh, rule number one stated that the ring shall be made of turf. That's in case somebody falls down. It's a bit softer of a landing. It shall be four and 20 square feet uh, formed of eight stakes with ropes forming a circle around. Each man should be provided with a handkerchief of a color suitable to his fancy. These will be called the colors. And you'll notice that in boxing today, boxers are known by the color of their trunks. Butting heads shall be deemed foul. Uh, no party resorting to this practice shall be deemed to have lost the battle. Uh, all attempts to inflict injury by gouging, tearing of the flesh, finger, uh, using fingernails or biting shall be deemed foul and you'll be disqualified. Rule 18 said that all bets shall be placed uh, and paid as battle money after the fight. Rule 22 said that if anybody interferes or if darkness comes too early, remember before electric lighting, the referee will have the power to name the place of the next meeting, uh, either if possible on the same day or as soon as they may continue the fight. You're not allowed to use any stone, sticks, or resin or anything in your hand to make your hand heavier, to make your punches more powerful. If you're caught using any of these, you will be disqualified by the referee. And lastly, anyone who uh, essentially gets pushed into the ropes has their life endangered either by being strangled or is unconscious. That's what apoplexy means. Uh, they will then be able to be broken up by the referee, and the referee will deem a winner and a loser in that case. The goal of bare knuckle boxing was not to hurt anyone, uh, so the referees would then take charge to try and make sure that they remained as safe as possible. There was a need for new rules because in 1743, Jack Broughton accidentally killed an opponent. He didn't mean to, uh, but he did strike a punch to the head, which led to some bleeding in the brain, uh, and his opponent did unfortunately pass away. There were some rules that were introduced, and they were, the main one was if someone was down for 30 seconds, they were deemed to have lost, if they couldn't get up under their own steam. On the right, we can see an image of a boxer, and he's wearing these types of almost leather gloves, and these were known as mufflers. They were not as well padded as boxing gloves are today, but these were used in training and exhibition bouts to try to limit uh, or reduce the amount of injury that was being seen among boxers. Now, the loss of support and his rise to fame again. After 1866, prize fighting was outlawed in England, and anyone caught doing this was going to be arrested and prosecuted. This led to many boxers leaving the UK and heading over to the United States, where prize fighting was still legal. After years of struggling for legitimacy, glove boxing increased in popularity as there were more sanctions and more rules in place to regulate the sport, establish universal champions, but also make sure it was safe for the fighters. Jack Mace is a very famous prize fighter because he had the longest career. He fought for 35 years, uh, and when he was in his 60s, he decided to retire. But he continued to fight exhibition matches all the way until the age of 79, and he is known as the father of modern.
what every sportsman in England in the 18th century wanted was a patron. Men with money. If you could get noticed by one of the patrons and take some of their money off them, that was really your ideal. It's like having a sponsor in the modern world. It opened doors socially. It provided money and security in a world that, that didn't really have any guarantees on either. Bill's exploits on the fringes of the boxing world soon got him spotted by one of the prize ring's most well-connected backers, Lord Camelford. London beckoned. Camelford was the classic upper-class playboy. He was a wayward cousin of the Prime Minister with a taste for riotous living. Lord Camelford had this um, reputation for dressing down, for living low, which was really quite popular in that age, where gentlemen, by putting on the clothes of a lower social class, you could pretend to be one of them. You could go to the sleaziest of taverns and do the most disreputable things, and he'd get away with it. He lived in this twilight world between the down and outs and the lordly moneyed class. Camelford was a man of many vices, and at the top of his list came gambling. There had been a revolution in France, there were revolutions all over Europe, and people were terrified. They thought that there was going to be one in England. If you inherited a large fortune, you might not live to spend it, so why not gamble with it? And so they did. People were beginning to be a bit embarrassed about bear baiting and cockfighting. So they were looking for something else violent to bet on. The violent thing they found then was pugilism. Lord Camelford introduced Bill to the high temple of the boxing world, the Fives Court on St. Martin's Lane. Gentlemen flocked there to soak up the atmosphere and rub shoulders with London's elite community of prize fighters. Bill liked what he saw, but to chance his arm in the prize ring's top flight would be a prospect fraught with danger. So we've got two questions to think about. Uh, the first is, what else did the Victorians ban around this time, uh, so in the 1860s, and why did cruel sport become less popular between the years of 500 and present day? And the second one is very similar to a question 5, 16 mark. So just take a moment to think about those. You can pause the screen, and when you're ready to continue, just push play. So what else did the Victorians ban around this time? If you said public executions, you're absolutely right. These were seen as barbaric. We know writers such as Charles Dickens were really pushing for the government to get rid of these cruel entertainment sports uh, and start to have more regulation and rules introduced. And why did cruel sport become less popular? Well, there's a few reasons. The first and foremost, as we've already seen, it was seen as barbaric. It wasn't very sophisticated. And with the Industrial Revolution and its prime, Britain being seen as a world leader, it wasn't very becoming of a nation to have the best factories and best technology, but also to have these very cruel sports. And lastly, Britain wanted to set the standard for what a modern society should look like, and that would be eliminating cruel sport and certainly having sport with more rules. Now time for bonus facts. So why is it called a boxing ring? Well, we know that boxing rings are not a ring at all. They're actually square. Uh, but originally, a boxing ring was created when the spectators would form a circle around the two fighters, and they would hold a rope. And that was to create a playing area, and that the boxers could not leave that area until the fight was over. If a boxer were to stumble into the ropes, the audience would often shove them back into the fight to make it continue. The rules changed often, often dictated by the crowd. Uh, as already mentioned, a fight in High Wycombe would be very different from a fight in Aylesbury. And depending on the crowd you had, they might deem some things to be acceptable while others not. So a fight on a Monday uh, might say that you are allowed to kick your opponent, while a fight on a Saturday might say that kicking is not allowed. And lastly, boxing was seen as civilized, uh, even though this image here does not look civilized in the slightest. It is certainly more civilized than bear baiting and cockfighting were. 
And people in the late 1700s and early 1800s were looking to move away from such barbaric sports like cockfighting and bear baiting. And boxing really set the tone for what was seen as more civilized and socially acceptable. So that's it for today. Please have a look on Show My Homework for your quiz and complete any other tasks set by your teacher.